Hello everyone, my name is Clay, and welcome to another episode of Terminally Nerdy's Indie Impressions, the show where I take a look at independent, non-AAA, and niche titles, giving you my quick first impressions after at least two hours of playtime. And today, we're going to be looking at the procedurally generated Zelda clone, Lena's Inception. And this was created by Bitten Studios, or Bitten Studios. It's uh, two guys, uh, as far as I'm aware they're guys, two folks. Uh, who are former Chucklefish developers. They've worked on, like, Starbound and helped with Stardew Valley and a bunch of other stuff. And apparently this was a passion project of one of them for the last couple of years to kind of, I guess, test out how procedural generation in a Zelda-like game would work. And then they created Lena's Inception. So what you're looking at here is exactly what I just said. It is a Zelda clone. It is a top-down action-adventure game you go through eight different dungeons, you get different items that allow you to progress outside of those dungeons and allow you to fight the boss within those dungeons. Stuff like a lighter for fire, you get a spring which lets you jump, you get a uh, frickin' bow and arrow, bombs, etc. Things of that nature. Very straightforward. What makes this game different is one, there's a heavy focus on a story, if you play in the story mode, and two, it's procedurally generated. So the way the game works is when you start a new game, you're going to be asked to put both your character's name in. Default is Lena. And then you're going to be asked to put in a seed. Now, what the game doesn't tell you is that the seed is also the name of the kingdom that you're in. Fun fact, if you try to put Hyrule in, which I did, and that's what I did for this footage if you're watching this on YouTube. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, you end up with a world name of Don't Sue Me. <laughs> which made me laugh when I did that. Uh, but then it generates the world based on that seed, and then you're sort of left trying to figure out what's going on. So there's a bunch of different game modes in this. There's a surprising amount of replayability. I actually made three different games and had three different complete starts of where everything was and how to find it. Visually, the game is very, very nice. The pixel art is fantastic, and it actually has two different art styles with their own soundtracks. It's got an 8-bit Game Boy Color art style, which looks nice, but I honestly don't really like it, but I've never been a fan of that art style to begin with, necessarily. It's very, very basic. Uh, and then it has a 32-bit art style, which looks really nice, and that's what I prefer to play with. The designs of the enemies are fairly basic. The bosses are fascinating, actually. They're all uh, archangels, apparently. Uh, and they get very, very creative the further you go. The first couple of bosses are very simplistic, and then you start getting into bosses that have two phases, and the second phase is really bizarre and weird. So, art direction is really nice. Uh, the character portraits are nice as well. They've got a lot of personality to them during the conversation sequences, so that's good. Uh, the art of the world is nice. A lot of it's focused seemingly on the art. Like, the way everything is presented to you seems to be focused on that, like, art style. Now, I do have some problems with the UI, unfortunately. And this also has to do with the controller. So I played on a controller, I did not play keyboard and mouse. But you only have so many buttons. For some reason, they decided not to use the trigger buttons. So on a standard Xbox controller, what most people play on on a PC, you've got your four face buttons, you've got your D-pads, you've got your two thumbsticks, all that's used. And then you have two shoulder buttons and two triggers. The shoulder buttons are used, the triggers are not. And this limits things. Uh, a good example of this is the spring item. So you get the spring item and it's what let you jump over gaps. However, if you equip the spring, you cannot equip the shield as they both go in the same slot and thus use the same key. Additionally, on the UI, in the lower right corner, you'll have three hot buttons. These are swappable. Uh, you put different items that you want to use in there. So they're kind of like if you're playing original Zelda, they're what you would put your, you know, your bombs in, your arrows in, etc., your potions. However, the three keys are not marked. There's just three buttons. They don't tell you what they correspond to. They correspond on the controller to the X, Y, and B in that order from left to right if you're playing on an Xbox controller. But there's no visual indicator that that's what they mean. So the first time I got an item, which was the pet whistle, which calls your companion back to you, I had to sit there hitting buttons on my controller until I figured out, oh, that's the button that's doing that. 
And then when I got a potion, I had to put the potion in one of the other buttons and then hit buttons till I figured out which button that hotkey went to. Further, I can't rebind any of the controller stuff. I can rebind all the keyboard controls, but I went through the options menu and I did not see a single option to rebind my controller at all. Those things need to be changed. Um, other than that, the story is actually pretty funny. And there is actually a story you play as Lena. She is a school teacher in whatever kingdom that you've made. And when you leave her school, which is really the only thing you can do when the game starts, it doesn't give you any direction, her school suddenly glitches out and she can't get back in. So she decides to start trying to investigate what this is. She ends up running into the village elder, and something horrible has happened to him. And in running into him, she also runs into the hero of legend, who is a mute hero who is dressed randomly kind of like Link, but the colors are different. My first game, he was actually, he looked almost like Link. He was in green. Second time I made a, care, uh, a playthrough to see the generation, he showed up in blue. Something unfortunately happens to him. His name is Lance, by the way. And Lena just takes up his sword and starts dealing with problems. And when I say this is a Zelda clone, I mean, instead of Triforces, we have uh, Power Stones. Instead of three of them, there's four of them. I've only, you get the Fortitude one from the hero, uh, and I've gotten one for Compassion. I have no idea what the other two are. Uh, every time you kill a boss, you get a memory. And from the look of it, there is something weird going on here beyond all of this, based on, like, an item I saw in Lena's house and kind of how people reacted to her when they saw her after a certain point, uh, when I was going towards Dungeon 6. So I'm really curious as to kind of where the story goes. Now, if you're not going to play story mode, and again, this has got a randomization to it, so there's a lot of free playability here, there's like nine other modes with leaderboards that you can do in this game. There's a daily seed with a leaderboard. There's... Uh, Item-specific challenges, where instead of having a sword, you only have bombs, bow, uh, lighter, etc. There's uh, challenges to do all the dungeons without getting hit once. There's do all the dungeons and only get hit three times. There's just do all the dungeons in order. Do a random dungeon with random setups, etc. A ton of replayability here. And honestly, I had a ton of fun with it. I spent about three and a half hours before doing this video, and I'm also... Uh, I also streamed it on Sunday on the 12th, so that was a fun thing to do. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Terminally Nerdy for my streams. Check that out. And, uh, yeah. Also, the game is only going to be 10 bucks, and it releases on the 17th of January. And for $10, you really can't go wrong here. There's a lot of potential for a lot of fun with this game. It's really well made. And other than those slight complaints I had with the UI and the un inability to rebind, which I hope gets patched out so that, you know, there's a little more obvious what's going on. I really think there's a lot of potential in this game and kind of where it's going, and I'm honestly interested to see where Byton Studios goes from here, because this is a really good game for a solid price that I had a lot of fun with, and knowing that, I kind of want to see where they go and what they do next, so check it out. It's on Steam. $10, Lena's Inception. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one, everybody. Take care. Hey there, I just want to say thank you for watching this video, and a special thank you to all my patrons who are listed over there on the right hand of the screen. If you want to get your name in those credits, feel free to check it out at patreon.com slash terminallynerdy. And hey, be kind to each other and stay nerdy. Thanks.